Veda Stuti chapter, 87th chapter of the Srimad, 10th canto. It's the longest chapter in the whole work. Prabhupada called Prayers of the Personified Vedas. And this question arises there that if we concede that with mundane instruments you can only express what is mundane, then how can you vibrate the holy name, have a spiritual discussion, express anything accurately about the supreme reality, or read a spiritual book, or any of these things? Right? If you're limited by your seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, feeling, by mundane senses, and the mind, which is also mundane, Mind is also mundane. Intelligence is mundane. So how can you express the spiritual with the mundane? Actually, this is one of the flaws of Prakrita Sahajaism. That's what they're trying to do. By reconditioning mind and intellect to express what is divine. By simulating spiritual substance, right. uh, <clears throat> simulating. It's like neuro-linguistic programming. I'll look at the picture of Krishna. I'll incessantly hear the sound of the name of Krishna. And in this way, I'll recondition my, mind, my senses, mind, and intelligence to be saturated with Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> Guru Maharaj uses this slok from the Bhagavad Gita to prove that that's a fallacy. Because he's saying, Bhumi ro pohana lo vayu kam mano budhir evacha. Mind and buddhi are, are prakriti. They're mundane elements. And who is jiva? Apareyam itastvanyam prakritim bidime param. A superior prakriti to that is jiva shakti. So the long and short of it, again, I said it's the longest chapter. In the, tenth, in, the, in the entire Bhagavatam, is that, and perhaps Vishwanath and others will point out, this is why you have senses, is for spiritual expression. I've tried to connect this to the expression of Rukmini, Rupam <laughs> Akilarta labam twayat chuta bishati patramba patra chitramba patra pamme. As he's saying, now that I've you know, heard your bhuvana sundar, through hearing I could understand you're the most beautiful thing in the world. Now I understand, that's why we have hearing, is to do that. It's not just one of the things you can do with hearing, is hear about Krishna. That's not the actual point. That's what hearing is meant for. Seeing is meant to see the divine form of Krishna. So the reason you have senses, even mundane senses, is to allow for this possibility. So it's true. Going from down to up, you can't reconfigure matter to express spirit. No amount of finite will be equal to the infinite. But the infinite can make himself known to the finite. He can, he, spirit can manipulate matter. So the heart, under the in, the heart, which means the deep heart's core, consciousness, the, our innermost consciousness, under the influence of Krishna conception, can express itself outward through the mind and senses, and the tongue can vibrate Krishna Nam. That's Bhaktivinoda Thakur Sharanagati. Not that it's a common misconception amongst the Buddhists. I think they'll go like, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. They'll vibrate this sound. Listen to that sound. It will purify their hearts. What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> so you're going to vibrate a sound that's going to purify you. There's some canceling there. Rather, the heart under the influence of Guru, Sadhu Shastra Guru Vaishnav, can express outward the holy name or spiritual concept 
or the infinite making itself known to the finite. What is, in English, the word parrot is also a verb. You can parrot what you've heard from others. It means mindless, unconscious reproduction. So the mindless, unconscious reproduction of sound will not generate spiritual substance.